today I'm going to show you guys how I've been making my own homemade cultured butter and if you've never made it before it's a unique tangy butter and it enhances the flavor and the health benefits of pretty much everything. It's made by fermenting heavy cream with cultured buttermilk so it's actually a fermented food and it's really delicious and I think that you guys are going to like this one. You can grab the recipe down below at healthyelizabeth.com. Let's get into the video. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna show you guys how to make homemade cultured butter, which if you're a butter lover like I am, you are definitely gonna wanna try this out. Homemade cultured butter is basically just a unique and tangy, flavorful butter, and it has more health benefits than just traditional butter. The difference between traditional butter and cultured butter is basically traditional butter is made using heavy cream, and then cultured butter is made using fermented cream. So we have all those live and active cultures in it, much like a kefir or sourdough bread, or yogurt, all those really gut healthy foods. This is basically taking your regular butter and making it really good for your gut. So you might be able to find cultured butter at the grocery store, but making it yourself at home is a great way to make sure that one, it's organic, and two, that it's also grass fed. And you can also control how long you ferment it. So you can either ferment it longer or a shorter amount of time. And that also kind of changes the flavor. It makes it tangier or less tangy. So you can kind of tweak it to your own personal preference. Fermenting the cream also increases the butter fat content which causes it to have a higher smoke point so if you like to do a lot of roasting or baking or air frying and you want to put some butter on there instead of things like avocado oil or olive oil whichever you use using a higher fat butter is going to help you do that so if you want to take some vegetables and air fry them or bake them in the oven at a nice high temperature you can still use butter and smear it on there when you're using cultured butter because it has that higher smoke point so let me go ahead and show you everything i'm going to be using today to make this cultured butter so this is the cream and the buttermilk that I like to use to make this cultured butter and I really like this brand because it's organic grass-fed but it's also low temperature pasteurized which is important and then the buttermilk doesn't contain any gums or any additives to it so you're gonna want to use a buttermilk like this that is cultured buttermilk that doesn't contain any of those things so this is a really great brand it's a small family farm and I really love supporting companies just like this you're gonna want to make sure that it's at least organic and then if you can find grass-fed that is even better but if you can't find organic or grass-fed, just try picking up a local heavy cream or buttermilk. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to culture the cream. So what you're going to want to do is grab a glass jar that has a nice tight fitting lid. I like to use WEC jars. And then I'll take my cream and my buttermilk and we will start by pouring in the heavy cream into the glass jar. And I am using about one liter, that's about four cups worth of heavy cream. Next, I'm adding my cultured buttermilk, and this is my culturing agent. And you can either use buttermilk like I'm using, or you can even use unsweetened plain yogurt that has live and active cultures, cultured sour cream, or even cultured creme fraiche. Any of those would work here, but whichever culturing agent you use, make sure it's something you just have already in the fridge because you only need to use it one time. And for future batches of butter, you can make it using the buttermilk that is left from this first batch of butter. So once you've added in your three tablespoons of your culturing agent, all you have to do is mix this together and put the lid on, and then you're gonna let this ferment at room temperature for about 24 to 48 hours. I like to do 48 hours because it makes for a really flavorful and tangy butter. You'll be able to tell when the cream is cultured and fermented because it will be very thick and have a sour smell, much like sourdough or kefir. So just check it, make sure it's looking good, and then you're gonna wanna put it in the refrigerator to chill for a about an hour. You want to make sure it's nice and cold that way the butter fat will stay firm and not melt during the churning process. So now I'm just pouring that cold cream mixture into the bowl of my stand mixer and I have it fitted with a whisk attachment but you could also just use a food processor fitted with a blade and I'm going to whip the cream on medium high speed until the cream has turned to whipped cream and has formed soft peaks and you want to make sure that you cover your stand mixer with a clean kitchen towel just to avoid any splattering. So once the cream has become whipped cream, then I'm going to reduce the speed to low and then the butter will completely separate from the buttermilk, leaving only the butter and the buttermilk and the mixture should start to look curdled. So just continue whipping the butter and the buttermilk until that butter has formed a solid mass on the whisk. So once your buttermilk mixture looks like this, we're going to separate the butter from the buttermilk. And to do this, you could either use a fine mesh sieve over a large bowl 
or just hold a nut milk bag over a bowl, but I actually like to use what's called a nut milk maker. You can get them for really inexpensive. I'll link one down below. And I like to use it for my almond milk, but then I'll also use it for this. So it's really easy. It has a little fine mesh sieve, but it sits on top of this little jar canister thing where all your buttermilk can drain directly into, and then you can cover it and put it in the fridge. So at this stage, all I do is pour in that buttermilk mixture, and then on top you'll have your clumps of butter, and you want to make sure that you just clean off all that good butter from the whisk. Once all the butter is in the top of that sieve, what you're gonna wanna do is press that butter up against the side to help drain out the remaining buttermilk that's still in the butter. You wanna make sure we get all that out, and then the next step, you're gonna want to wash the butter. So we're gonna wash the butter in really nice, cold, filtered water, and then I like to add ice and make a nice cold ice bath that we can use to wash our butter and keep it nice and cold so it doesn't melt. Now you just take that excess buttermilk and you can use it for the next round of cultured butter. So what I like to do to wash the butter is start by squeezing the butter in that cold water repeatedly until the water starts to run clear. And what I'll do is I'll do it several times and then I'll dump out that water and get fresh water and just kind of rinse and repeat literally a few times. And you wanna squeeze the butter once more at the very end to release the water and get as much water out of that butter as you can. Now, I prefer to cook with salted butter, but it is an optional step here. So to make salted butter, I just like to take my Celtic sea salt and I'll just simply sprinkle some of that salt over the butter. And then I'll use my hands or a spatula or a butter knife and kind of fold that into the butter, evenly distributing that salt throughout it. Next, you're gonna want to divide the butter into appropriate amounts and shape it as you desire to. You could even use a butter mold or shape it and then cut it into little sticks, however you wanna use it. You could also even use a digital scale and kind of weigh it out and see you know, how much one stick is worth of butter to make sure it's very accurate if you're baking, but who's counting? <laughs> Next, you're gonna wanna wrap the butter portions in wax paper. So I like to use craft tape to secure it as well because you can use it as a little label and write on it and I just love how this looks especially in the fridge it just makes my little heart so happy so I'm gonna go ahead and do that with both of these sticks of butter but you could also just put it in a little container with a lid and put this on your countertop if that's what you want to do that will work as well and you can store this in the refrigerator for up to a month or you can place it in a freezer bag and use it for later and it should stay fresh in the freezer for roughly about three months You guys are seriously going to love this homemade culture butter. It is so unique, it's tangy, and it enhances the flavor and the health benefits of almost anything, and it's perfect to smear all over your favorite foods. I feel like cultured butter is one of the less popular ferments, but honestly, I feel like this is gonna be a staple in my house now, and it's gonna make all of our vegetables that much better tasting and easier to digest. Don't forget, you can get the recipe below.